been put in place. Now with unprecedented number of people working from home and going remote, several cyber security threats are surfacing. From video conferencing apps that need your microphone and camera access to businesses being run over home networks with possibly poor hardware routers and printers, we are more vulnerable than ever. And to address all the cybersecurity risks of working remotely and some good practices that we can all follow, I am now joined by Saket Modi, co-founder and CEO of Lucidius, an enterprise cybersecurity company. Saket, thank you so much for speaking to us on Startup Street. Now, let me just quote one data to start with, because according to the Internet Crime Report of 2019, which was released by USA's IC3 uh, of the FBI, it said that India stands third in the world amongst top 20 countries that are victim of internet crimes. And given that everything that I just said, that uh, more and more people are working remote, what is our biggest challenge today while we work from home? And uh, how can we overcome that at this point? Mega, always a pleasure to be with you on the show. Uh, the data that you're pointing out is the direct function of number of users mm. that are there in the country. Uh, India is probably the second largest user of the internet in the world, so this data does not surprise me. To your point around the problem statements that are there in this new paradigm of working or living uh, in the digital space, I'll break it down into four blocks. The first is the person himself or herself, because the biggest problem of individuals is they've never been trained about cybersecurity awareness, and they really don't know about what are the right things to be done or not to be done uh, while being online or while being digital. And it's generally been you know, taught by your friends. The second is the person has a laptop or an iPad uh, or, a, or a very, very smart phone. And, and out there, again, the problem becomes that, you know, what are the things that are in the best interest of the person? Most people don't know how smart their smartphone really is. So really picking on that, and that becomes a very, I would say the smartphone is too smart for most people. So that's the second problem statement. The third, because those smartphones and laptops are connecting through a, your router, which is there at, at your home, which was never your problem, to be honest, uh, from a work perspective, because you were connecting to Internet, which was generally set up and secured by the IT team or the security team when you were there at your office. Suddenly that's your problem. So, you know, how do you make sure that the connection through which you're going out to the wild, wild west, which is the internet, is really secured, is the third part. And the fourth part is obviously what I mentioned, uh, the internet or the emails that you really get on the other side or in the wild, wild west, which is there. Yeah. So these are the four key areas of where the problem statements are lying, uh, make up. Okay. Okay, so you've broken that down for us, but let me add another problem that we are facing right now, which is a growing concern when it comes to a huge number of COVID-19 and coronavirus-related web domains that have been registered just in the past few weeks. Uh, and the number, I believe, currently stands at 6,000, out of which 2,200 were found to be suspicious, and 93 of these domains were confirmed as malicious and dangerous to visitors. How is one supposed to browse the web safely anymore? Mega, the 6,000 number with domain names registered in the name of COVID, if you actually take the other keyword called coronavirus, mm. it's actually 5,700 more domains. And, you know, the list really goes on. How do you mm. do things to really secure yourself? Number one, we start with the people and the awareness. How do you make sure you should go online and really read the best practices of what needs to be followed for every kind of software that you're using so that you're aware of what should be done and what should not be done? About laptops and software, the second part which mm. I spoke to you about, making sure that you have a latest operating system in the minimum having your Microsoft Essentials and a free of cost antivirus downloaded. In fact, Government of India has this incredible uh, free of cost initiative called Cyber Swachita kendra.gov.in. If somebody goes there, you can download a free of cost antivirus uh, which, which, which they provide. So highly recommended you should do that yeah, along, with making sure your, uh, along with making sure your operating system is, is updated. The third piece is the connection piece is where making sure that your Wi-Fi routers have passwords which are not WEP or WPA but they are WPA2 uh, which is far more difficult to crack than, than, than the other forms of encryption through which you're connecting to Wi-Fi and of course if you're going through a VPN making sure it's actually a trusted VPN through which you're connecting and the last part which is the Wild Wild West which I referred to more from an email or from a website perspective on the email side making sure that you know you're using your company emails which have 
email gateway security solutions defined and based on that when you click on something uh, the website security angle comes into the picture i highly recommend two websites to be used uh, one is to make sure of the authenticity of the website there's a very nice website called uh, scamadvisor.com if you just go there and type the url of whatever you've got it will tell the trust score of that website and at the same time to make hmm. sure that there are no malware okay. on the website that that you have go to virusportal.com and write the name of the website and it will tell you whether it's a malware website or not so this is the whole spectrum of how you can secure yourself okay. for all the four blocks that i mentioned mega All right so some actionable insights right they scamadvisor.com and virustotal.com those are the two websites that uh, users can use but keeping that in mind could you also talk to us about uh, uh, you know everything that you said how easy is it is for startups or companies to kind of integrate some of the tools or some of the practices that you just uh, listed out at this point considering most uh, most of their workforce is going remote So the good news out here is mega there's a lot of open source free of cost solutions which are available in fact some of the largest companies including the crowd strikes of the world are actually going ahead and giving out uh, their their endpoint protection software free of cost for a given time which is there so i don't think it's a very very expensive value proposition uh, and considering the risk which is involved out here we should definitely do it i can quote a 30 second example this has been one of the most hottest scams in the uk right now where every time somebody goes for a covid test and hackers are breaking into those hospitals to find out who are there for the covid test and the moment they return to their home they send a fake email saying uh, i'm sorry to say this but you've been tested positive on 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 the corona virus and you need to click here to be able to you know get more medicines which you will deliver at your place and the moment they click there because there's a very high odds that people will click there uh you know it, it's a malware that gets into their system and hangs everything and of course steals the data and does all the bad things which are there so it's a very very scary time when it comes to uh you know not clicking on things and uh, people need to be really uh, you know cautious about everything that they do on the internet okay you've listed out a lot uh, that even individuals can do to kind of stay safe uh, while browsing the web but before i wrap i have to ask you saket with zoom recently making headlines for being hacked and not being end to end encrypted even though they have made a bunch of announcements to kind of say that platform is uh, more secure uh, uh, than it was before as an expert according to you what is the most safe and secure video conferencing app out there from a security perspective mega we've been getting that question very very frequently from a lot of our customers globally we did that we did an analysis of where does the security risk posture or the security score of these two software stand as on date today and i can tell you cisco webex far outperforms zoom when it comes to the security posture as on date today now is zoom patching things yes they are that's what they say but as on date today cisco webex definitely wins the race All right thank you so much for sharing those details and of course you uh, said it out loud uh, that Cisco Webex at this point is one of the safest uh, uh, video conferencing apps that users can look at using at this point thank you again for joining us on the show with that we're completely out of time on this edition of Startup Street don't go anywhere more news and updates continue on the other side stay home and stay safe